In this video, I want to focus on the advances being made in autoacoustic emission testing with regards to newborn hearing screening. I'm going to focus my attention on one advancement, which is the advancement of weighted averaging techniques in OAE measurements. As with any screening test, the age-old problem always exists, that we want the screening test to be as fast as physically possible, whilst at the same time the results being accurate and robust to try and diagnose the condition which we're trying to identify. With regards to the autoacoustic emission, the challenge that we face is that the autoacoustic emission is so small in comparison to the noise which is recorded at the microphone in the ear canal. The way to separate the autoacoustic emission from noise is of course to use signal averaging. Here, in the transient evoked autoacoustic emissions, we do this by presenting a number of clicks into the ear. This can be seen in the image below, with the waveform becoming more consistent, the noise being reduced, and with the OAE being present within this waveform. One of the ways traditional averaging improves test times is to use rejection thresholds. Here you can see a result of an OAE from a quiet adult patient you can see that the noise distribution is mainly centered around 30 decibels. And we can see in this situation, the rejection level has been set at 40 decibels. And therefore only a few of the noisy data points have been rejected above this 40 dB level. What this means is that in OAE standards, the noise level is low in this situation. This also means that we have lots of data which is accepted and in this situation, we'll have a test time which is relatively fast. However, not all test conditions are this ideal. Here is an example of a test condition from a noisy infant child. Here we can see that the noise levels are much higher. However, the rejection levels still remain at the same level. What that means is that we're going to have much more data which is rejected. Remember, everything in the red section is going to be rejected. This means that the accepted data, there's just so few data points that in order to do a test and achieve a sufficient signal to noise ratio, it's going to take a very long time in order for this test to complete. And therefore, setting a rejection level at 40 is not an ideal situation for this particular patient. So to recap, if we have very high rejection levels, this allows lots of data in, but it also allows lots of noise in. If lots of noise is in the recording, then this is going to lead to poor quality results, and therefore we're going to have to increase the test time to reduce the noise. The opposite happens if we reduce the rejection level. Here we get very high quality results, but as the data is insufficient, it's going to again take a long time to perform the test as we need to spend more time collecting that high quality data. What makes the situation with autoacoustic emissions even more challenging is that we do not know how noisy each patient's going to be and therefore predetermining the rejection level is going to be a challenge. However, there is a better way. The better way is to employ weighted averaging. In weighted averaging techniques, what we do is accept that during a test, there's going to be conditions where there's low levels of noise and high levels of noise. In this example, we can see two stages of the test where the noise is different. However, embedded in the noise is the OAE response, and this within the same patient should remain constant. In this situation, we want to prioritize the top tracing which shows the quiet recording, whereas the bottom tracing is less desirable for us because it has a lot of noise. What weighted averaging does is rather than just rejecting the noisy trace, what we can do is to instead prioritize each trace depending on the level of noise. So in the quiet condition what that means is that we want to give this extra weighting in the signal averaging process whereas in the noisy situation we're going to reduce that weighting. By reducing and increasing these two graphs respectively, what you can see 
is that by increasing the weighting of the quiet trace, we can see that we see a larger OAE response. And then by reducing the weight of the noisy tracing, we can see a reduced noise response in the scaled responses. What that means is that when we average these together, which contain less noise and are weighted in preference for the quieter conditions when the autoacoustic emission was being recorded. So what does that mean for the person performing the screen? Well, the first thing that means is that it's going to result in improved test time. What you can see is a graph which displays test time on the x-axis and number of trials on the y-axis. Here we can see all the data points taken from a number of patients. And this was the time it took to complete the autoacoustic emission test using traditional noise rejection or traditional signal averaging. When we then perform the test in the same conditions using weighted averaging, then what you can see is that the test times become much quicker when we employ weighting averaging techniques. We can see that the test time is different for different patients because naturally different patients have different levels of noise and different test conditions. But we can see that within all conditions, the weighted averaging improved test time. In addition to improving test time, we can also maintain high quality recordings whilst using higher rejection thresholds. What this graph shows is the effect of changing the noise rejection level and the signal to noise ratio of the resulting autoacoustic emission at the end of the test. What we can see is that within this patient, by increasing the noise rejection level, the overall signal to noise ratio decreases as we increase the rejection level, with 35 dB in this instance being the ideal noise rejection level for this patient. Remember, this is looking at a single patient only, and this graph would be different if you was testing a different patient. However, when we use weighted averaging techniques, what we can see is that the effect of noise rejection level on signal to noise ratio is minimized. This means that we can use a high level noise rejection, which will allow lots of data to be collected whilst at the same time maintaining good quality signal to noise ratios. So again, winning on saving test time, but also winning on maintaining good quality results. Lastly, we should note that this effect is different across multiple frequencies. What we can see is that weighted averaging techniques have greater signal to noise level improvements in the lower frequencies. If we take the figure of 3 dB, we can know that a 3 dB improvement will reduce test time by 50%. So when looking, for instance, at 2 kHz, we can see by employing weighted averaging techniques, we can save 50% test time as opposed to traditional signal averaging. This is greater in the lower frequencies and slightly reduced in the higher frequencies, but still providing an improvement at all frequencies than traditional signal averaging using traditional noise rejection. So in summary, you can find further information regarding this study in a white paper written by Dr. Pete Bray called The Benefits of Weighted Averaging in Real-World Autoacoustic Emission Measurements. Weighted averaging allows for ejection levels to be set higher without compromising on signal-to-noise ratio of the autoacoustic emission measurement. Weighted averaging decreases test time compared to traditional averaging. And lastly, weighted averaging is frequency specific. And remember, a 3 dB improvement like we saw at 2 kHz is equivalent to reduction in test time of 50%.